All right. So how many times are we supposed to forgive? Seventy-seven, right? Jesus in our reading this morning says seventy-seven. Peter comes to him and he says, how many times must I forgive someone who has sinned against me? Seven times? Which I find interesting. Why did Peter think seven was the perfect number to use to ask for the number of times to be forgiven? But he says seven times and Jesus says, no, seventy-seven times. Right? So, does this mean we're supposed to keep track? 77 times? And actually, this translation, if you read it in another translation, like the New Living Translation or the New International Version, version, version says, says what? I heard it over here. 70 times 7. Which is? 490. Right. So, it's either 77 times we're supposed to forgive somebody, or it's 490 times. So, if we're supposed to keep track, right, if we go with our reading from this morning, if someone does something to me 77 times on that 78th time, that's it. Gloves are off. We're done. Right? Or if we go with the New Living Translation, that that 491st time that this person does this thing to me, we're, we're rolling on the floor. That's it. It's done. It's over. We're going at it, right? Is that what that means? 77 or 490 times that we're supposed to do this? And does that literally mean the same thing? Or is it you do something to me and it's different things, right? Am I keeping track of this? Like you stepped on my foot. Do, you have, do I have to wait 77 times for you to step on my foot? Or if you step on my foot and hit me, do those count the same? Right? 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5 literally says, Love does not keep a record of wrong. So whoever counts sins is not loving. Right? But really, what is this verse telling us? This is September 14th, right? How many of us remember what happened three days and 13 years ago? Where were you? You remember? This verse talks to us about forgiveness. But what does forgiveness mean and who do we forgive? Is this talking about the world and we need to blanketly forgive everybody for everything that happens? Or is it talking about fellow believers? See, our verse completely and clearly says, Peter came to Jesus and said, when a member of the church sins against me, how many times am I to forgive them? Right? Is that what it says? If it doesn't say that, it says something pretty close to that. Right? This verse specifically is talking to us about how we deal with people within the body of Christ. Now, is that just the people sitting in this room here? That also includes those people that gather at that building just down the street there and at the buildings over that way and when, you know, all around us that are gathering right now at different times in different states and different places. This is about how we deal with people from the body of Christ. And we can actually see this. The whole chapter of Matthew 18 deals with this. The first verse... And Matthew 18 talks about who is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. It sets out a theme for chapter 18 of the Gospel of Matthew that this is about the body of believers. And how do we deal with each other? And who among us is greater than the other if any of us are greater? Which I don't think we are. These verses are not in the context of our relationship to the world, but a relationship between each other as we Go in and through life. It's about, to go back to last week, the horizontal, not the vertical, or the beyond us in the horizontal of the body of believers. Right? It's about our relationships with insiders. This is supported by 
Peter's use of the word adelphois, which is brother or sister. It's actually brother, but it means both brother and sisters, fellow members of the community, the family that we're all in. This is in Peter's question where Peter asked, how many times am I supposed to forgive a fellow member of the body? How many times am I supposed to forgive an adelphois, a brother, a sister? And the syndulos, which is a word found in our parable that Jesus then says. It's a, it's a fellow slave or a fellow servant, right? In the parable, there are multiple slaves. The king forgives one. That slave goes out and throws another slave, a fellow slave, into prison. They are slaves of the same king. They are servants of the same master, just as we are all servants of the same king, slaves of the same master, right? God is our master. Therefore, we are all syndulos with God. We are all fellow slaves, fellow servants under the mastership of God. This is what puts it into the body. It's about forgiving those around us in the body. Now, does that mean we don't have to forgive the world? No. But these verses are not talking about that relationship at this point in time. So to go back to Peter's question, Peter asked the question, how many times am I supposed to forgive a brother or a sister, someone in the body, when they do something against me? How many times am I supposed to do that? And Jesus says, forgive them 77 times. An unlimited amount of times you are supposed to forgive them. The question is, bless you. That's not the question. The question is, did that brother or sister ask for forgiveness? And was there repentance? In our verses today, there's nothing about the person who did the wrong asking for forgiveness. There's nothing about Jesus saying that that person has asked for repentance. In a In a parallel gospel passage in Luke, it talks about the sinner must repent. It talks about rebuking the sinner and getting the sinner to repent. However, in our reading from Matthew this morning, there's nothing in there about that. It doesn't say that they need to ask for forgiveness before they are forgiven. And it's not an easy thing to do. So the question then is, does repentance need to precede forgiveness? And does forgiveness actually lead to reconciliation? There's multiple levels here that we're not even going to get to touch on this morning about this passage. Peter asked, how many times am I supposed to forgive? That doesn't mean that a relationship is reconciled. That doesn't mean that there's repentance. Forgiveness is something that can lead to reconciliation, that can lead to repentance. Repentance is something that can lead to forgiveness, that can lead to reconciliation. But our verses only deal with forgiveness. We need to be forgiving towards all who have sinned against us, whether or not they are repentant. And our attitude of forgiveness is not like, is not for the sake of that other person. But our attitude of forgiveness is for us. Right? It's our own well-being. Holding deeply held grudges affects you or me as a person more than it does the begrudged person that you're holding that grudge against. Right? Forgiveness heals me. Forgiveness removes my inner turmoil. It removes my desire for revenge. Forgiving the other doesn't restore our relationship. It does not always lead to reconciliation but it needs to precede any chance of reconciliation. Ann Landers is quoted as have saying, hanging on to resentment is letting someone you despise live rent-free in your head. Hanging on to a grudge is letting someone that you despise live rent-free in your head. What does it help to hold on to a grudge? It raises blood pressure. It probably raises blood sugar levels. It probably raises cholesterol levels, all of which leads to heart attacks. Right? Is it easy to forgive somebody who's done something to you that they shouldn't have? Not always. 
When a person hurts us, it's hard to let go of that resentment. It's hard to let go of that pain. It's hard to let go of those things. But I can tell you from personal experience, there's absolutely a release and a wonderment when you let go of something that someone has done to you, whether in or not that person will ever be a part of your life again. There are members of, of a previous congregation where I was pastor at that will never have any part of my life again and have done some horrendous things to me and my family. But I can say without the shadow of a doubt, I have forgiven them 100% and will joy the day when I get to see them in heaven. That doesn't mean they're going to be a part of my life here on earth ever again. But I will rejoice in the day when we get to gather together around this table when God gives us the feast that is to come. Forgiveness is not about reconciliation. Forgiveness is about releasing ourselves from the pain and the hurt and destroying of our own lives to release us and to free us, to live into the life that God has given for us and to us. It's about our health and not about the person who we're forgiving. Sometimes we want repentance before we want to give forgiveness, though, right? We want the person that's hurt us to come to us and say, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Well, sometimes that person may not even know that they've did something to us. But there's also a sense, even in biblical terms, that the promise of forgiveness needs to precede repentance. Is if we assume that we're going to be punished for something that we've done, we're much less likely to ever admit that we've made a mistake. We will hide it. We'll find ways to put a positive spin on it. We'll just lie about it. You see, the only time that the word repentance is ever mentioned in the whole book of Romans, it is used in, in the order of kindness that precedes repentance. I believe it's Romans chapter 1, verse 2. Do you not realize that God's kindness is meant to lead you to repentance? God forgives us before we ever ask for forgiveness. And God loved us and gave us His Spirit and His Son to come and show us what it was to live. And in that kindness leads us to the fact of knowing that if we are repentant to Him, that it's not going to be the justice that we deserve. But we're going to get the grace that He's promised. God's kindness and promise of forgiveness leads us to repent and to seek reconciliation with Him. So what does it mean to forgive? Literally, the word in the Greek means to send away, to make a part, or to release. To send away. To release. Last week I commented how sin is, is meant, sin means to miss the mark. Right? If you do something and it doesn't hit where you where you intended for it to hit, that's sinning. Sinning is missing the mark. It's not hitting the perfect bullseye. In that set, in that sense, then forgiveness is removing or taking away all the arrows that have not hit the bullseye. It's taking away everything. Nothing imperfect remains. They've all been sent away. They've all been removed. Forgiving ourselves is releasing ourselves from whatever we bind ourselves into. It's that not holding on to that grudge, not letting those people live in our heads rent free, wondering what we can do to get back at them. It's releasing ourselves from what we're bound in, our anger, our feelings of vengeance. They're all sent away. By forgiving, we're released from the anything that holds us back and we're no longer under the control of past sinful acts that we've suffered either doing to others or having done to ourselves. Another way to define forgiveness is not letting passful sin behaviors, whether my own or what was done to me, determine how I will act and feel today. It doesn't matter what happened then. Because it's all gone. God loves me and wants me to move forward into a life that He's given to me and blessed me with. And if I'm holding on to something from back here, I may not be able to move into what God has called me into. 
I'm released from the control of everything that's happened and feelings that have ever held me or used me or made me do things I don't want to do. By forgiving others and ourselves for the wrongs that we've done or have been done to us, We're releasing ourselves into the life that God created us for. We're living into the existence that He's given to each and every one of us. And we're being the person He needs us to be, showing forth His mercy, grace, love, forgiveness to all the world. Is forgiving easy? No. Is it for someone else? A little bit. But it's mostly for us mostly for you to get those people out of your head and to move into the life that God has called you into. To be a blessing for yourself and your family and for all the world around you. So go out into the world released from anything in your past that has held you, forgiving yourself and others around you and knowing that if you go to God that God is always going to forgive you and bless you and send you out into the world to be a blessing for others. Amen.